Swift was formed in 1973 as a bank cooperative utility, to improve on the old telex system, introducing standardization and security to interbank communications. International interbank funds transfers are facilitated by SWIFT, but while the payment messages are transmitted over SWIFT, the movement of funds is not. SWIFT is regulated by the Bank of Belgium and operates under Belgium law, servicing more than 11,000 banks in 212 countries. Each bank on the SWIFT network has a bank identification code, consisting of the bank name, country, location and optional branch identifier. For two banks to be able to exchange foreign currency transactions they must become counterparties. They perform due diligence to ensure the other bank is of good character and set up bank accounts with each other. Ostro means ours and Vestro means yours. Thus our account at a foreign bank is our Ostro but to the other bank that account is a Vestro. SWIFT defines 10 message categories, we are interested in the MT103 payment, the MT202 cover and the MT910 confirmation of credit. In a simple scenario a customer of an Australian bank wants to send US dollars to their friend who holds an account with a US bank that is a counterparty for the Aussie bank. The Aussie bank processes an Aussie to US FX transaction and sends an MT103 to the US bank. That bank debits the Aussie bank's Ostro and credits the customer's account. Ah oh, but life is never that simple. What if a customer wants to send non-native funds, like sending euro from Australia to Canada, or funds to a bank their local bank doesn't have as a counterparty? For this we need intermediary banks, standard settlement instructions and two additional SWIFT MT message types. Aussie Bank sends an MT103 message to Canada Bank and an MT202 cover to their Euro Austro counterparty. The MT202 cover instructs that bank to send euros to the Canada Bank's Euro counterparty, and this counterparty sends Canada Bank an MT910 to confirm payment has been received. How does a bank know what counterparty bank the recipient bank holds an account with? Each bank publishes standard settlement instructions to SWIFT, which can be downloaded as needed. But I hear you say, what if the receiving bank you want to send funds to doesn't have a relevant SSI? Well banks tend to have a default counterparty they deal with for each currency. As an example the Bank of New York Mellon is the Kevin Bacon of banks. Through six degrees of separation they will work out how to get US dollars to any bank in the world. The main players in a bank's foreign currency team are the FX dealers who facilitate foreign currency deals for the bank's customers. The FX traders who trade currencies with other banks. Middle office which looks after static data like customer settlement instructions and back office which handles FX settlements. The size of the global foreign currency trade is beyond comprehension. On an average day Australian banks will do 150 billion US dollars of FX trades. Globally the FX trade is 7.5 trillion US dollars per day compared to the world's GDP which is 96.5 trillion per year. FX trade runs at 28.5 times the entire world's gross domestic product. Every Australian Tier 1 bank holds an exchange settlement account with the Reserve Bank of Australia. Tier 2 financial institutions have commercial arrangements with Tier 1 banks to perform interbank settlements on their behalf. At the heart of interbank transfers is the BSB, which identifies the bank, state and branch the account is held with. While the major banks have a BSB for each of their branches, 
some smaller players and former building societies have registered just one BSB for their entire bank. Back in the day every bank branch in the country had a BSB book, to look up the appropriate code when performing an interbank funds transfer. The oldest interbank payment method is direct entry. Tier 1 banks interchange direct entry files with each other five times per business day, each batch followed by settlement via the exchange settlement accounts at the RBA. It is typically used for batch payments such as company payroll credits and periodical debits such as insurance premiums. Customer-to-customer -customer payments which use a BSB and account number may also be processed via DE. Real-time gross settlement was introduced by the RBA in 1998, as a way of reducing settlement risk between banks. RTGS requires banks to send transactions individually and immediately settle via the ESA. The transactions themselves are nowhere near real-time, typically taking 20 minutes to an hour to appear in the destination account. BPay was founded in 1997 and is owned by Australia's four largest banks. Customers can make payments to any registered BPay biller through their bank, via their bank's online portals, without exposing their banking details, making bill payments secure and convenient. The customer reference number has basic error checking using the MOD 10 checksum, the same as used on credit card numbers. Banks accumulate bill payments throughout the day and then consolidate them into a BPay file for each recipient bank. When the biller's bank receives the files they consolidate the payments and then split them into new files per biller. The biller then gets a file containing their payments along with a single credit to their bank account. It's convenient for billers as they don't have to reconcile individual transactions and can load the BPay file to their account's receivable system for processing. The new payment platform was introduced in 2018, to facilitate near real-time payments. Payments are facilitated by services like ASCO by BPay, using a pay ID as the payment recipient identifier. NPP requires payments to be completed within three minutes, however some banks have implemented a policy to hold payments to new pay ID for 24 hours to complete security checks. First, the payment recipient provides their registered pay ID to the payer. That person then makes an NPP payment via their bank. The pair's bank looks up the pay ID to see what bank it belongs to and processes the payment to that bank. The recipient's bank looks up the pay ID to find the recipient's BSB and account number. And deposits the payment to the recipient's account. It's fast, convenient and doesn't expose the recipient's account details to the pair. Common to all interbank payments, both international and domestic, is that the payment message is independent of the value transfer. Money never actually moves, just the ownership of that money. All money ultimately rests with the central bank of the country of issue for that currency.